Hello everyone, afternoon all. Jesus Christ, my voice is still not good. Welcome back to Mexico and more specifically Chihuahua in the very north of Mexico. This is part number 13. I haven't got enough fingers of my 2021 Mexico series. You'll be glad to know if you saw the last video after walking 35 kilometers, having a mental breakdown and almost having a heart attack. Yes, seriously, I'm alive, brilliant. And that's very much the theme of this video de-stressing and going with the flow. For once in my life, I'm ignoring your endless lists of recommendations and I'm ignoring the fact that everyone's gonna say in the comments that I missed 23 Pueblo Magicos, Ciudad Juarez and 473 museums in four hours of filming. That's right, we're going with the flow today. I'm chilling out and at the end of this video, I'm gonna talk a bit more about that. So this video isn't just about Chihuahua, it's also about me. So if you don't give a shit, bye Hans. For the rest of you, Shut up, bus. Let's carry on. Ah, we're starting off with a little walk around Chihuahua. Here's the Angel statue. Is it a little bit like the Angel de Independencia in Mexico City? I don't know. Plaza Mayor. There was um, a protest going on here a couple of days ago. I think it's something to do with what's happening in Cuba at the moment. But this central square is awesome. The thing I'd say about Chihuahua, like first impressions when I got here a week ago, is that it's quite striking in terms of the architecture and the feel that it has. So that kind of area, when I walked into like the downtown bit, it was a bit like a Texan city, like Dallas. And you've got buildings like that, that are kind of European. You've got that building over there, which is the Palacio Federal, more on that in a second, which kind of looks like something out of Minsk or an ex-Soviet country. Here's the obligatory Chihuahua sign. As I said in Concordia, I'm noticing these signs in cities in northern Mexico aren't that typical sign that you see everywhere in central Mexico that they all kind of look the same you know but the ones in northern Mexico tend to be quite different in terms of the lettering Elotes San Francisco why is it called that probably because it's in front of the temple of Saint Francis of Assisi something that's very important to know about Chihuahua is that there's a lot of history with Miguel Hidalgo who arguably is probably one of the most prominent figures in Mexican history, Salida, Brilliant. He was the guy obviously that was kind of the catalyst for Mexican independence. He did the call of El Grito in Dolores Hidalgo in Guanajuato. Was it called Dolores Hidalgo before that happened or was it just called Dolores? I'll have to Google that. Interesting. And um, he was, oh God, I have to get this right. There's jailed, buried, imprisoned. Uh, I think this is where he was originally buried. Um, and he was eventually moved, the body was moved to Mexico City. Um, he was killed by the Spaniards, obviously. I believe one of his crimes was heresy, basically going against commonly held religion, religious beliefs, if I can get my words out. And there are some other spots we have to go to as well, over there, which have more history with Miguel Hidalgo. These things opposite the temple, I guess, have the story of the history of Chihuahua. I guess there are train lines, there's a guy killing a horse, cattle things like that there's a big thing with you know trains here because of course this is well creel i think is the terminus of the railway going from los mochis up here and i believe you know that was intended to be like an important trade route i read about um cattle being transported from kansas to topolopampo in sinaloa at least that was the plan anyway um, you've got fighting, you've got people shouting, again, people on trains. What are they doing? Are they like playing instruments? I don't know. We're heading into the Centro shopping area now, but before that, there's the government palace. Look at that architecture. Isn't it beautiful? Lovely. And look at those ladies' dresses. Aren't they colourful? And uh, opposite that is the uh, Palacio Federal. That was where Miguel Hidalgo was imprisoned. I think it says it up there, yeah, Miguel Hidalgo during something that I can't see, was imprisoned here 30th of July, 1811. And what I meant about Minsk or Soviet countries, Minsk is quite sort of modern because a lot of it was destroyed in the war. And you do get buildings that are just like this, you know, they're not extravagant or anything, they're just average, but that bit definitely isn't average. I love a good pillar. And look at that, 1890, 1946 at the top. This building is also Casa Chihuahua, it's a museum. And just to clarify, I'm not allowed to film in this building or the government palace as you would expect. Behind is a fountain. Oh my God, it's another fountain. There ain't even no water. What a surprise. Someone did tell me about the one in Culiacan, the one that wasn't dancing. It's because someone stole the copper piping. Brilliant. 
So that's not something that would happen in the UK. You know, people steal copper pipes to buy drugs. <laughs> Right, you've got to check out these things. They're bloody brilliant. Whoever thought of these deserves a medal or an Oscar or something because they're like outdoor showers, which is incredibly useful for the boiling hot temperatures here. It's not such a problem today because it's not exactly hot. <sighs> so refreshing. Hola, amigo. Uh, yeah, I saw a guy when I first got here just standing under one of these for ages. I don't blame him. Okay, every hot city in the world needs one of these things. Look at that dog up there. That's another thing about Chihuahua. It feels like Montreal with all this crazy street art everywhere. There's a lot more down here. I'll show you while I'm doing this bit. The other point of this video, right, is to help you gain a clearer understanding of what filming a travel YouTube video is like versus regular travel slash sightseeing. I can already hear potentially copyrighted music in the distance, so I'm backing away. That's because YouTube will demonetize this video if it picks up copyrighted music. Additionally, you're gonna see things today that are closed. Things close, right? They're not always open. And additionally, prohibited entry, like museums, government buildings, I can't go in them. In Mexico particularly, you can't film in museums. Very rarely you can. And actually, do you wanna watch someone walking around a museum in a video? I don't, that's boring. I might do that when I'm not filming, but just because it's not in a video doesn't mean I've missed it. Faltó. We haven't seen this for a while, have we? Have we stepped back in a time machine to 2020? I remember Tula from last year. I couldn't get into the central square because of the Prohibido El Paso tape. I do notice here, COVID kind of does seem to still be a thing. Everyone is wearing masks. Starbucks. I feel like this is the video in which I'm finally letting loose. A bit like Oaxaca 2018. Look, I think there's some, a storm coming. Um, Q comments like, oh, you're in Mexico. You should be drinking horchata or some Mexican thing. Sod off. I can drink what I want. I've got my own mind, you know. Anyway, before my sore throat gets any worse, do you some drone shots of this cathedral area? I know I do. That cathedral was very nice, very typical of Mexico. Hola amigo, there's um, oh he's interrupted me. There's a trolley bus, as you would see pretty much everywhere in cities like this. Trolleybus turistico. We're not gonna do it, because I've done them in about 17 other cities. Right, time to cross the road. Is this the place ahead of me that is the only place listed on Atlas Obscura for Chihuahua? I think it could be. It's uh, Pasquali, or something like that. Pasqualita. Um, it's like a wedding dress shop, like a bridal shop. Look at the wedding dresses behind me. Lovely. That isn't what we've come to see. I ain't getting married. What we have come to see, or not see, as the case may be. This is another classic YouTube problem. I believe it's meant to be in that window. Really, in. supposedly there's meant to be a mannequin in there. There is a uh, sign up there saying something about remodeling. Uh, thanks for visiting the exhibition. Yeah, great exhibition. Um, yeah, this mannequin, according to local legend, I don't know if it's true, it's probably a load of crap. Uh, oh, shitting Jesus. Sorry. Message to all Mexicans, do not interrupt me when filming, especially when drone flying, right? Unless you want to get decapitated. Where was I? Yeah, for this urban legend, apparently it's not a mannequin. Apparently it's the embalmed corpse 
of the original owner's daughter. Couldn't make it up, right? And it looks really lifelike if you see the pictures over this bit. Apparently it's got veins and stuff. How weird. Bonkers. This is classic YouTube. Just gotta imagine it. Right, we've come out of the centre area for a little bit to visit. Hang on a minute. Uh, Quinta Gameros. Oh, that's what it's called, yeah. Um, guess what? It's closed. Ah. Ah, spiky railings. Um, you've got to do what you've got to do to get the shot, right? Climb on railings. Um, this building is actually, and I'm being honest right now, it's really impressive because um, it looks kind of out of place, you know? It's not like a Mexican style building, if you know what I mean. Um, it was built in 1907, I believe, in a French Art Nouveau style, one of my favourite styles of architecture. You've got all these lovely little statues out the front. I think there's a fountain down the bottom. Again, not working. Um, and a lot of sort of detail on the windows and, uh, you know, these guys sort of spread eagle at the top. Um, you know, like one of those old style paintings with, uh, you know, the woman with their tits out. <laughs> and the roof is all like green. Um, interesting. It's a shame I can't get in, as always. <laughs> so shockingly, I have been to other areas of the city, believe it or not. So I'm living up by a hospital a bit further to the north. I've been down to Zoo Technica, all around that area as well. And overall, I would say Chihuahua is nice. It's a very clean city. That's one thing I noticed about it. Not only in the centre area, but kind of everywhere. There is a bit of consistency there, which kind of goes against what I said in Culiacan. And I believe it's along with like Monterey and uh, Mexico City. It's a city that is quite copyrighted music. It's quite um, sort of advanced, like in terms of education and industry, things like that. And you can see that it kind of feels like a more advanced city in terms of cleanliness, technology, industry, things like that. Okay, I just want normal elotes, not dolly elotes. Gracias. Ah, uh, no gracias. Uh, solo fresca. So, elotes, look at this extreme close-up of this beautiful piece of Mexican food. You know what, no one's ever recommended this to me, but it's one of the best things ever. It's kind of a metaphor for this video, that sometimes things you discover yourself and that no one recommends are sometimes the best things you could ever find. Look at that. Okay, I'm balancing on a bin. I've got this cooling down. And while the rather ominous looking black clouds loom overhead, I thought I would get the talking about me bit out of the way, right? So if you're not interested, just go to the next timestamp. You might think I'm being a bit shitty in this video, or like I've got a bad attitude. And yeah, you're probably right. But ask yourself the question, do you wake up every day feeling positive, happy, fluffy bunnies, golden unicorns? No, you don't. Sometimes you wake up and you want to shoot someone in the face with an AK-47. And that's how I feel today. In the last video, I kind of realized that I've reached absolute burnout for a number of reasons. And I wasn't joking at the beginning when I said I'd had a mental breakdown. <laughs> Come close to it, honestly. I was walking back from wherever I was in the last video. It was pouring with rain, there was lightning, and I burst into tears. And I never show emotion because I'm a man and men don't show emotion, right? At least that's what everyone's told for their whole life. I just completely fell apart. I don't know what was wrong with me. And I realized it's for many, many reasons. Um, you know, there is this expectation with YouTubers, particularly travel YouTubers, that you have to be like, oh wow, amazing, shocked, surprised, and all that crap in every video. I'm almost 40 years old. I've been traveling full time for five years. I'm not shocked by anywhere. Nowhere is surprising. You might want to say in comments, you know, why would I come to Chihuahua on holiday if I'm going to be miserable about it, but I'm not on holiday. I'm 24 days away from five years of full-time travel ending. It's Think of it like a job that you've been doing for five years that you just don't want to do anymore. And that's what I'm like. If I could be in Europe right now, which is my ultimate aim, I would be. My flights are all booked, by the way. I'm going back to Europe in 24 days. Things that have made me burn out, and this might sound a bit shitty, but it's honest. And I'm people always say, you know, oh, you're so honest. It's not honesty. It's just stating a fact you know what is the problem with people being honest in life what are you worried about offending people who gives a shit what other people think you know say what's on your mind the things that have um, kind of put me under a lot of pressure I feel especially since I've back in, been back in Mexico is recommendations from people I think people have got really unrealistic expectations about what 
one human being can possibly achieve in one day. As I said, regular travel is different from filming a video. Filming a video takes up to three times longer. And there's only so much I can do in a day. I can't go to the other end of the state in a video. You know, Chihuahua is larger than the UK. Can I go to from, in, from London to Scotland in one video? No, I can't. So why would that be true in Mexico? These lists that people send me, great. I really appreciate people sending me lists because it helps with research. But in experience, the things that people recommend are generally shit compared to the things that I find myself or just happen to come across without knowing about. Mazatlan, would I have gone to Mazatlan if it hadn't been reckon recommended to me? No, I wouldn't have because I don't like beach locations. I didn't like Mazatlan. That pizza place, that's what did it. That's what made me snap. I think you saw that when I flipped with that pizza. So many people recommended that as the best pizza by ever. It was awful. I can't even describe, the rain is starting. I'm never listening to anyone's recommendations again. As much as they are useful, it just adds more pressure to me to try and fit up teen things into a video when it's just not possible. The other thing as well is about the word falto or falto. I see that in comments a lot. And I know that from a Mexican's point of view or in Spanish, it's not seen as a rude thing. It's, it's someone recommending, you know, and suggesting in a good intentions, nice way. And I am aware of that. But in English, it's so rude. I would never say to someone that they missed something. Like if, you know, a friend of mine went to Mexico City and they happened not to go to Teotihuacan for whatever reason. I wouldn't say to them, oh, you missed it. Because it would imply that their trip was worthless, that it takes the value away from their trip. It's so rude. The thing about missing, I don't miss things. I consciously select things that go in a video. I may put, you know, a couple of things to do, a bit of food, you know, some first impressions and a walk around. I can't put everything in a video, otherwise it would be 50 minutes long. No one would watch it. And it does feel like, you know, I get it in the neck from the whole of Mexico when I don't put broth on a gordita or I don't like a particular pizza that was meant to be amazing or I pronounced something wrong. Yet, and this is going to be really shady, there are some channels out there that move to Mexico to live, stay in one city, don't travel, and just stand there talking about expats for 20 minutes without actually showing any of the city they're in while masquerading as a travel channel. But that's apparently fine, you know? And it, and it really gets on my wick. It annoys me, English slang. You know, it's, it's just something that's really frustrating how, um, you know, those, those channels are not travel channels. They are expat relocation channels. They don't do any traveling. They just stay in one place. That's fine. That's, that's what I want to do. Fantastic. It works. Great. But, you know, just give me a break for fuck's sake. You know, I can't do everything. I'm not a robot. So from now on, you will see a change. I'm going to be a bit more free in what I do and, uh, you know, try to be a bit more natural rather than the fake David. So that's it. How long did this bit go on for? Six minutes, oh fuck. Look at those moody skies in Chihuahua. Wow, this right, the last stop is just up here. The last spot is gonna put a smile on my face to end this video. Hamburguesas al Carbon. Again, something that no one's recommended. It's just something I've been walking past day after day. And you know that smell? It very much reminds me of my childhood, going to fireworks night, bonfire night, November the 5th. You would go out in the freezing cold in a scarf and a hat with gloves on, watch the fireworks display, and then afterwards you would go to like a fairground with waltzers and dodgems and stuff, and you'd go to one of these trucks to have a, like a real char-grilled burger. And I see these places everywhere in Chihuahua, these hamburguesas al carbon, like proper cremated. Um, and the smell just takes me back of, you know, childhood, burgers in a field in November with your sisters and your mum and your dad and then you go on the dodgems and puke it up. Hopefully I won't do that today. Burger. I'm going to eat it outside this burnt out building. How appropriate. Ooh, Fin del Mundo were like this. Abandoned crappy graffiti building. Look, there's toilets. What were toilets over there? Caballeros, damas. Um, yeah, this is the sort of thing that isn't recommended and it's bloody brilliant. This is the conclusion to this video. Is this a five-star resort in Cancun? No, this is me. Like it or lump it. I come from a shitty area, so I'm eating in a shitty area. With flies. This burger is beautiful. Look at that char-grilled aspect. 
perfect. You also get like a big chili with it and um, salsa in the bag. I, obviously, I took all the lettuce out. Mm. That is amazing. It's just cheese and a burger. And I think they spread mayonnaise on the bun as well. Um, it's not like ones I've had before where they have like ham and cheese kind of all together and the cheese melts in the ham. This is beautiful. 55 pesos. Cinquenta y cinco. Hmm. I'm done. Right, if you haven't enjoyed this video, hit the dislike button, don't subscribe, and um, you can see more of this, or you won't see more of this coming up. However, if you are a regular and you realize that I am a bit of a twat, get ready for the next lot of videos because we're heading back to the legendary Torreon and also areas around the area to film five videos coming very soon. I won't be listening to any of your recommendations, so we'll see what happens. Thanks for watching, check out the end screens and I'll um, see you next time. I'll finish this in this shithole. Hmm.